Hello, board. Thank you for being in my presentation. Today, I'm going to present my first ever data science project on identifying disaster tweets. Well, the question is, is Twitter data is important to save lives? I'm going to convince you in few slides that it actually is very important to save lives and also to harm lives, especially during a disaster. Twitter as a, uh, as a block is a lot faster than news, as all of you know. It's a great source of timely information during disaster, but it's also a great source of misinformation during disaster. Take this one, for example. Somebody is tweeting, I can't believe the cure for COVID-19 was hidden from us. Watch this video. Uh, we, we all have seen these kind of tweets, these kind of messages on social media, and it can go viral very quickly. And many people are gonna see it within a week. It could be real dangerous. But here I have good examples of how Twitter actually saved lives. Not, uh, let's forget about the misinformation for now, but it can have good effects. This example is from Kashmir flood in 2014. Citizens formed a group and joined the, uh, the aid guys, the aid agencies, helping their uh, fellow citizens, the injured people. Or during Texas Hurricane Harvey in 2017, a lot of people who were trapped in buildings, they managed to send texts, they managed to tweet and ask for help. So I leave the examples here, but you can find tons of examples on Google if you just use a few words, Twitter data disaster. A lot of examples of how Twitter actually significantly helped uh, during disaster. One example that I should not forget to mention, and I just learned it today, is from the recent flood in Germany, South Germany. And actually government realized that, could, that social media could be the best, uh, the best channel of communication as they couldn't inform people on time because of the electricity disconnection. Yeah, eventually, what we aim to do with Twitter data in this project, we would like to classify data from Twitter into disaster tweet and non-disaster tweet. Predict one if disaster tweet, predict zero if non-disaster tweet. And why this is challenging is because people use words and a lot of time they don't aim for the literal meaning of the word. They're using words a lot of time metaphorically. Like this example is a real example from Twitter. Somebody posted that picture and wrote on the on plus side, look at the sky last night, it was ablaze. I can tell, you can tell ablaze is used metaphorically here, but we would like to get the machine to realize this. I am using this data set of 10,000 tweets that were hand classified. The main important columns are keywords, location, text, and target. Text is from tweets. Target, um, target is labeling the text if it's disaster related, non-disaster. And keywords are words or hashtags that best describe that tweet. Yeah, a sample of the real data, the text, the tweet. I would like to look at a few of them together with you. Like the second one, forest fire near La Rangue, if I'm pronouncing correctly, Canada, or 13,000 people received wildfires evacuation uh, orders in California. And this is labeled correctly as one, while there are shorter tweets at the bottom. I love fruits, what's up man, and they are labeled as non-disaster. Disaster-related tweets are about 32% of the entire tweets in my data set. And 
other relevant data, other relevant information for us, maybe the word length of tweets is not larger than 30, mostly. Like 30 words maximum in every tweet. And this is a sample of disaster tweet, a word cloud. See what words are prominent, like outbreak, collision, uh, evacuated, wreckage. And non disaster tweets are making this other word cloud, Armageddon, if I'm pronouncing correctly. Um, yeah, more fun words, but also words that could be uh, notifying to disaster, like siren or explode, but they are not used uh, literally. So what I'm doing in this project is basic, finding 10,000 most occurring words in the corpus using this library, nice ready library um, from collection. And then I'm encoding my data according to these 10,000 words. So I look at the words and look at the tweets. Well, I'm not doing it, machine is doing it, but this is what is happening. Every, every word that exists in the tweet is having a label, one number. Every word that is missing in that tweet from the, word, from the vocabulary is labeled zero. This gives me an encoding, simple encoding. And then I go for tokenization. I'm using tokenizer from Keras. Input is a tweet and output is a vector of shape one in length of the tweet, sorry for the typo. So this time I have a vector as well, but the vector is a lot shorter and it's not as sparse. But here is an example. Our deeds are the reason of this earthquake. May Allah forgive us all. And this is encoded to that, that nice vector that is not too long. And the numbers are showing how important it is the word, for example, hour is more important than the word deed in the vocabulary. And then I go for padding and truncating that is basically cutting uh, tweets shorter to 30, to lengths of 30, or the ones that are too short, I add zeros to make it 30. I'm examining this list of models. A few classical models of machine learning, the best of them, like the best results I could get out of them came from Bridge Classifier 0.77. And then I'm examining three neural networks, a simple neural network first, and then with embedding, and then embedding and LSTM. Well, what we see here is not actually the entire information because what I get out of neural networks in this table is the maximum accuracy I could achieve during the training, which I trained only for 20 epochs. So I have this nice graph for you to show you that actually val uh, validation accuracy of neural network with embedding is the best because it's increasing steadily. Although the other two have maximum higher than uh, embedding neural network with embedding, but neural network with embedding is more promising. If we train it more, we get better results, hopefully. Ideas to try are numerous because this is my basic project and I had really little time to do this project. I aimed for another project, but the data was, uh, I couldn't get my hands on data on time. So I went for plan B because I have to graduate from DSR. <laughs> so, yeah, there are numerous ideas to improve this project, as already suggested by Chris and by Abir. One could use transformer, makes perfect sense, but I didn't go that far yet. I'm gonna do that. This is a work in progress. We could elaborate more also on decision trees. It showed some success. Maybe we can get a bit more out of decision trees if we use, for example, Xboost, XGBoost, and then we can elaborate on embedding and use, for example, gloves. And that's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention.